think our, our work has been mainly focused on, on this relatively novel finding. It's not that novel anymore, but it was novel when we initially reported it many years ago, that a substantial fraction of people who develop epilepsy after a, a, a moderate or severe traumatic brain injury have a non-lesional MRI, meaning that the, the injury was a diffuse injury. Right. And, and I think one of the things that we've primarily been interested in investigating is, well, why, why is that? Right. And, and one of our hypotheses, which, which I think is, is likely to be right, at least to some degree, is that uh, what is going on is that the axonal pathways, the axonal tracts that are afferent and efferent into parts of the brain that are highly susceptible to epilepsy, such as the mesial temporal structures or in the hippocampus, the the axonal tracts that are afferent and efferent to those structures are, by nature of their anatomy, by nature of, of their uh, location in the brain, uh, and 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 uh, you know how how the uh, course of the brain are particularly sensitive to the shearing and stretching forces that occur uh, in in traumatic brain injury from you know automobile accidents or falls or things of that sort. So so the hypothesis is that the primary injury in, in these diffuse cases is an axonal injury and that subsequently there is Wallerian degeneration and, and in some cases atrophy of, of the gray matter structures or rewiring of that gray matter structure after the deafferentation of that. So I think that that kind of uh, posits a, a, a completely different mechanism from what traditionally had, had, had been thought to be the, the model of post-traumatic epilepsy. And, and, and it suggests that there may well be, be different approaches to try and, and prevent epilepsy in those cases.